Hey everyone, welcome to Paper Tray Ink Stamp Affair 2017. I'm so glad you've joined me today. I'm Carissa Wiley and I am here with a couple of cards for you today featuring the 10th anniversary tradition of tin or aluminum. And I'm actually going to create some faux tin or aluminum embellishments on a couple of cards today. I have three techniques for you, so let's go ahead and get started. Now for my faux tin or aluminum today, I am using these Nouveau Gilding Flakes in Silver Bullion. Now, Gilding Flakes have been on the market for quite some time, but they seem to be making a comeback this year, so I wanted to give you a few ideas for including them on your card projects. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make some kind of faux tin embellished die cuts. Now I have some Be Creative sheets and I also have some Be Creative tape. If you don't have the sheets, you can use this wider tape to line up a couple of strips on your cardstock just so that you get sticky all over the front of your cardstock. I'm cutting a piece off of this sheet that's big enough to accommodate my Wish Big die and I'm going to add it to some 80 pound cardstock. Now I chose the Be Creative adhesive sheets for this because I feel like I get a much better consistent coverage across the cardstock when I use this particular type of sheet adhesive, but you can try whatever type of sheet adhesive you have or try the double-sided tape and line that up all along your cardstock. And you can see once I had that on there, I ran it through my die cut machine with the adhesive side up because I want the adhesive on the front part of my cardstock. And I'm left with this intricate die cut that has adhesive all over the front of it. Now in order to add my little gilding flakes here, I'm going to remove the backer that covers that adhesive and I'm going to place it inside a box because the box helps me contain these little flakes. These little flakes are actually metal that's like super thin. They can get a little bit messy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> But doing this inside of a box will help you keep that mess contained. And you may see a few of these little flakes flying around from time to time. That's okay, you will wash and so will your floor and your crafting surface. So don't be afraid. Just get these gilding flakes really pressed into that adhesive. You can see I'm really pushing it into that adhesive there so that I get a good coverage. And then I'm going to knock off most of the excess with my fingers and then take this over to my work surface and take a stiff bristled brush and kind of brush all over that. And that's going to remove those rough edges that you can sometimes get because the flakes will hold onto the adhesive, but then you'll have a little bit of extra flake holding off the side. So I'm just gonna use that stiff brush to knock away the excess and then clean it up. And I am left with a die cut that has that silver or faux tin embellishment all over it. Now I'm going to die cut a few more of these Wish Big die cuts because I wanna stack them up to create dimension. And for this, you're gonna notice that I'm actually using stick it adhesive. And that's because I find that this die cuts a little bit better, but I don't get as consistent of a coverage all over the die cut. So that's why I use the Be Creative in the first part and the stick it adhesive in the second part because it's not as important that I have a really nice solid coverage. I'm just using this to adhere these on top of each other. So you can see I took my first layer there and I popped it inside the negative space and I just used a post-it note that has all over adhesive on the back of that to hold that in place. And I'm exposing the adhesive on the back of these die cuts and stacking them up. Now you can see I'm just taking and lining up the edges there and I'm gonna take about four layers and layer them on top of each other and you can see I'm left with some nice dimension there. And that negative space just helps me make sure that I have this all lined up great and that my die cut doesn't end up all wonky because sometimes these intricate dies can kinda get away from you <laughs> and lose their shape. So I added some liquid adhesive on top of that final die cut there, and then I added my aluminum piece on top of that. And now I can remove the post-it from the back and pop out my die cut, and I have a really nice thick dimensional die cut that's covered with that faux tin foil look. Now for my images on this card, I'm gonna be using the Invitation Basics stamp set, and I've die cut some balloons from the coordinating die set just so I could get an idea of where I wanna stamp my balloons on my card front. And then I'm going to ink them up in some various colors of Distress Oxide ink and stamp them onto my card front. 
Now, because these inks are fairly opaque, because they're a hybrid ink between a pigment and a dye, I'm going to lose a little bit of that detail from that party time sentiment in the middle of that second balloon there, but I'll show you how to fix that later. But for now, I'm just going to get all of these stamped and then kind of just allow it to dry a bit and then take it over to my trimmer. I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch off of each side of this front panel here. The original panel was cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. So this is gonna end up being a three and three quarter inch by five and a half inch panel. So I'm just creating a few little bows and strings for my balloons here. And I'm just using some silver thread for that because I didn't want them to be overwhelming. And I'm attaching them onto my card front using a little multimedia matte finish from Ranger. And what I'm going to do is I am actually going to grab a backer from that stick it adhesive and I'm going to place this over those bows and then place a heavy block on top of it and that's just going to protect my block from getting any of that adhesive on it while these dry. So I set that aside and let it dry and now I'm adding some more of that Ranger Multimedium on the back of my die cut sentiment there and you can see I also added a little bit of black and white striped pattern paper along the side. And to finish that up I just used an aqua card base and I adhered that stamped panel onto the front using some foam adhesive. So for my second card project, I'm using the Vintage Linens Floral Stamp Set. This is beautiful, and I'm stamping these beautiful florals in some bright colors here. Now, this is a layering stamp set, and it has layers that fill in some of those white areas, but I decided to leave them. That's the great thing about layering stamp sets. You can stamp as many or as few layers as you want. Once I had my flowers stamped, I went ahead and stamped my leaves as well. And I'm gonna hit them with a heat tool just to make sure that they're dry before I go messing with them anymore. And before I run them through my die cut machine, I am going to use the opposite colors from the flowers. So the pink inside of those yellow flowers and the orange inside of the pink flower to stamp the centers. And then I'll use the coordinating dies and run those through my die cut machine and cut them out. Now I have a piece of textured cardstock here in this beautiful aqua color and I am going to stamp my sentiment. I'm going to actually emboss it on the front. I'm using my mini Misty for this so that I can stamp it a few times to make sure I get good coverage since this is a textured cardstock. I'm gonna prep the surface using my powder tool there, stamp it three times in Versamark ink in the exact same spot and then coat it with some ultra fine detail white embossing powder and then heat set that. This sentiment, by the way, is from a beautiful stamp set called Pen and Ink, and I just love the beautiful stamp sets as well as the variety of sentiments that you get. Now, I'm going to mess around with these floral images for quite some time and figure out my perfect arrangement. Does anybody else do that? You get them all cut out, and then you're like, does it go here? Does it go there? Does it go here? <laughs> So once I got them arranged, look away if you are faint at heart, I took it over and those parts that were overlapping the edge of the card, I went ahead and trimmed those off using my tonic guillotine trimmer. I would not recommend like a sliding blade trimmer for trimming off those extra pieces because they're going to grab them and kind of pull them off of your card. This cuts really sharply down the edge of that card front and allows me to trim off those overhanging die cuts and they were adhered using foam adhesive so that's another reason you want to make sure you're using the proper type of trimmer to trim those off now the second way to add these flakes to your card project is to use a glue pen and i use the zig two-way glue pen for this today because it dries tacky once I allowed the glue to dry onto the project, then I took my project over to the box and I pressed those flakes into the adhesive once again. And I'm left with these little faux tin polka dots or dots on the middle of the stamen of the flower. That's what they're called, right? The stamen. <laughs> and then once again, I used that stiff brush to kind of push away the excess and break off the edges of those flakes that were overhanging. And the third way to add this tin embellishment to your card project is to use some adhesive strips or tape here. I'm using the eighth inch Be Creative tape and I'm putting it along an angle on my card front, just kind of matching the angle of those floral images there. And you can see I've turned my card front to where that first piece of adhesive is along this one line of my craft mat. And then on the other side of my sentiment, I can line my adhesive tape along that same grid line that's on the other side and then apply that and rip it or tear it or cut it off. <laughs> 
So I removed the backer from that tape and then I took this over to my box once again. I'm pressing in those flakes into that adhesive strip that's along the front of my card and then using the brush to brush away the excess. And you can see here the details that I added to the centers of my flowers as well as that faux tin or aluminum line that I have along the card front there. Now to restore that area of the sentiment that kind of got lost there, I just went over the area with a white paint pen. I was very careful and just traced over the line that I could see to kind of restore that bright white appearance. And I finished off these cards with some sparkling clear sequins. So there you have it, two projects today featuring three ways to add faux tin or aluminum embellishments to your card projects. I actually have one more idea for adding these faux tin or aluminum embellishments over on the Paper Tray Ink blog. So be sure you head on over there because I'll give you another idea for using these on your card projects. And I love the way that these gilding flakes leave you with a little bit of an antique, kind of a textured look, just like you would get with like tin foil. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed these projects. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Carissa Wiley here for Paper Tray Ink today for Stamp Affair 2017. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.